Hey, Donnie Walker here. Who else, eh? If it's Donnie Walker's YouTube channel, it must be Donnie Walker. Or my twin or something. So, it's Saturday. Busy week. Got lots of stuff done. You've seen my other videos on that John Strides and the Poo Line coming up. And I dug a couple old other saws out of the pile at the new shop yesterday. I got a McCullough 4 dash 38 made between 1953 and 1956 i printed off the thing off mike acres the website to chainsaw collector's corner the sheet on it and told you all and tells you all about it and that it's a rotary valve intake and uh has points and condenser and is a gearbox i don't know what the gearbox ratio is but but uh i will find that out so this is the model right here 40-30A, okay? Shop manual unavailable, owner's manual, yeah. Okay, so this has got the big maple leaf on top. Very cool. First time I've ever had one of these apart, the thing was seized, okay? I just spent a couple hours unseasoning this thing. I finally got it moving and figured out how to get this side off to get into where the rotary rotor valve is that times the engine for for its um, piston timing right your fuel timing so this is a pretty cool cylinder look at this thing three six nine transfer ports you know three on each side and your booster booster ports there very cool let me just see if I can get a little better shot for you on that. I'll get my uh, can or flashlight here. So the top end wasn't seized. It was the bottom and just from sitting with everything, you know. So look at that. Cool, eh? Big combustion chamber. Barely not even a, a uh, squish step on it. There's the piston. Three rings on it. Is that cool or what? Three rings. Yeah, and they're all moving. I took the sear clips out. Look at the bearings in this. Okay, so here, here's this carburetor that I'm trying to figure out. Like on, underneath the fuel tank, it's got like a like a fuel pump, okay? Two lines coming out of it down there and it feeds down into the air filter or to the fuel filter here, which I took off, two lines on it. And there's a couple gaskets that I sort of say and a big filter right there. I don't know how this carburetor works. I don't even think it's a carburetor. It's just some sort of fuel flow that you, you manage. You get a big adjustment on the bottom. It looks like there's some sort of adjustment down here. This is weird. I've never had one of these ever apart. There's your throttle. And on the throttle, there's like this plate here. It sits here. Somehow, when this is together, that throttle is pushing that plate, okay? Which is letting your fuel in to, to your rotor to get the fuel into the engine. I want to learn about how this thing works. I'm going to have to go maybe see Bobby Walker tomorrow. And maybe even talk to Mike Akers and a couple other fellows on the Collector's Club corner there. Very cool, man. So here we go. This is how you're... This, this rotor just pushes over the crank and it's got a notch in it so you can't get it out of time. It'll, it's a fixed fixed one. Or on go-kart engines, like these high revving kart engines I've raced for years, those are rotary valve engines made in Italy. All these carts here, that's what everyone ran in like Formula A class. Those things rev like 20,000 RPM, wicked speed, man. Great engines. So that's your three different types of two strokes, eh? Number one, piston port. Number two, reed valve. Number third, third one is rotary valve. Okay, now you have fuel injection, but whatever. Okay, so that's how it works. As the, as the crank's turning around, it's coming around and it's getting to your opening. Then it gets to your closing. So opening and closing on a rotor, rotary valve. If you read up on it, you can learn how that goes. It's, it's, it's a bit complicated, but I tell you, man, guys are very slick at it. 
I ran some engines from a guy named Peter De Bruyne in Holland, racing carts when I was in Japan. And oh my God, those things were so powerful. But that guy, he knows how to do it. My friend Magnus helped me build a couple too. Okay, so the bearing on the other side is a, is a, is a roll, roll, has a ball roller bearing. It's moving fine. I finally got it moving. The rod bearings seem to be all okay on the bottom. And the top has two cages pushed into the rod. And the wrist pin I got out quite easily. So that's cool. This is the side, the crankcase here. You see it's got like a brass brass kind of a shield here, eh? So the, the rotor run, rides on this on this brass here. And that's, that's where the intake is right here on it. Very interesting bearings here. Double kind of needle bearings. Okay, cool. If I am going to put this back together and go going, I'm going to need a little bit of help. So I'm going to have to go see Bobby Walker, my dad. So there's your in intake there, eh? So as the disc is turning around, right where my finger is moving, that's where the fuel's going in, okay? Coming out of here from the carb stuff and into there to the rotor valve. And as it turns around, it gets its fuel. Pretty cool. The point system is really cool. When this is on, on when this is on there, the points are on the outside, which is cool. It's done under the flywheel like uh, 125s and uh, card engines were. So you can at least get out the points to clean your points and set them uh, without having to take the flywheel off. It's got this unique kind of cam off the side of the crankshaft here that pushes this, this rod and it, they, it does push it. I've seen them open and close when I, before I took this cover off. Points look similar to like uh, uh, old Briggs and Stratton or Tecumseh points. Points are points, eh? Probably made by Wico, Wico or whatever they're called. Very unique. I've always wanted to take one of these apart and I've always wanted to run one. So maybe between me, my dad, some friends on that collector's club and bucking, maybe we can get one going. It'd be really neat. I do like that the top end is perfect. I even saved the cylinder gasket right there. Got it out without breaking it. But now you need to figure out this fuel system. So anyone out there that knows about this fuel system, how it works, yeah, I'd like to know. It'd be nice to get some uh, gaskets and stuff for it too, but that's probably going to be hard. Yeah, so yeah, Ford Ash 30A. Cool, man. And I showed you uh, on those old John's reds, they had rotary valve ones too, eh? Um, rotary valve intake for the diesel ones and whatnot. So yeah, I'm just going to get all these parts now into bags and label the bags of which pieces they were so I don't mess anything up or I remember where they go. But really unique, this thing. I, uh, I'd love to get it going. It ain't going to be happening right now until I learn about that fuel system and stuff. And then when I figure that out, I'll get back to that. For now, I'm going to uh, put it in a box and just Tuck it away until I learn that stuff, eh? Okay. Yeah, man. Time to go home and do some work. Do some honeydew jobs. Hey, honey. Then I might go so out see my dad later or, or go see him tomorrow. And I'm going to take that with me. So hopefully he remembers how that works. Because I know he worked on these when he was young. He might not remember, but maybe I can try to get him going with it. Hey, Dad? Love you, buddy. Love you, Mom, too. So anyways... Keep your saw in the wood, stick in the ice, rubber on the road. Have a great weekend. It's a little misty today, but it's supposed to be a bit nicer tomorrow. Check out the walkersawshop.com online store. And you can buy some fancy stuff for your, your man or your woman for Christmas. Because that's coming. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, have a good weekend. Bye.